Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to a look at Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. The de facto sequel, I suppose, to Pathfinder Kingmaker. As the name quite clearly suggests, it uses the classical role-playing tabletop system Pathfinder, and in this case, it also uses a campaign surrounding the Fifth Crusade to kick a bunch of demon ass and close a huge rift in reality known as the World Wound. It's a pretty damn epic tale, and I gotta say, the writing for Wrath of the Righteous is really, really good. Kingmaker was a pretty alright classical RPG, but honestly, this one has definitely got it beat in terms of the quality of the story, the writing, the quest, and the companions in particular. Anyone who's been watching my content for any extent of time knows that I am a big fan of companions in RPGs and believe that if we're ever going to be seeing the next real RPG revolution, it is going to have to focus heavily around the idea of intelligent and interesting companion characters. Now. Sadly, the revolution is not quite upon us just yet, but the companion characters in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, that name is starting to become quite the mouthful, are some of the best companion characters I've seen in years and years and years, honestly. I actually think we've got to go all the way back to Boulder's gate to see characters that I have enjoyed interacting with and playing alongside quite as much as in this game. That is some damn high praise. I do wish there would be a little bit more interaction between the characters outside of conversations because there are of course story elements when you talk to various characters and occasionally your companions will interject with their own thoughts and opinions. These are some of the best parts, particularly with certain party compositions. Ember and Dare and the Count, for example, play off one another brilliantly. Again, I do wish that perhaps they'd added even more to that, added in so that they interact with one another even more, but... <sighs> We're nitpicking at this point. The writing as it is, is really good. And wanting more of it, I suppose, is just the natural evolution of things. It even managed to do something that hasn't happened to me in a very long time. At first I saw the companion character Wenduag, and I instantly thought, eh, not interested. A kind of bowish, fightery, hunter style monster thing with spider legs acting all goody two-shoes in the underground because there's a bunch of mutants down there yaddy 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 boring hell no she's actually become my favorite character now and i'll be using only content from the very early parts of the game in this video because again the story really is the strong point and i wouldn't want to spoil too much of it but let me hold my fellating of the writing here for a moment and move on to something a little bit more specific. The gameplay will, of course, be very, very familiar to anyone who played Pathfinder Kingmaker, or indeed anyone who's played classical RPGs or tabletop RPGs, particularly, obviously, the Pathfinder system, is going to feel right at home here. If you haven't played any of this, it is a classical RPG. Your characters have the good old-fashioned stat blocks, including such old favorites as strength, dexterity, charisma, intelligence, etc. And these are used to determine the character's ability to hit the enemy, to avoid being hit in return, and to resist various negative effects. There are also a huge amount of traits and feats and spells and various powers that your characters will get their hands on over the course of the story campaign. Uh, for example, you could specialize in a particular field of magic to make it more difficult for the enemy to resist that type of magic. 
There's even a so-called mythical path in the game, which gives you access to uh, more incredible powers. The campaign itself, well, you're fighting the armies of the abyss. It's a pretty goddamn merciless game, and we'll get to that in a moment, and that is also why you get some powers pretty far beyond the usual. Uh, a key thing, for example, is that since you're fighting a bunch of demons, they do not give a flying shit about your magic nine times out of ten. Not only will they have a lot of resistance to magical damage, such as uh, fire, ice, poison, etc., they will also be able to have a magic resistance score as well, which gives them an opportunity to simply just ignore your magic straight up. That is a... <laughs> A pretty harsh enemy for any wannabe mage, which is why it's really nice to see a mythical ability that actually allows you to ignore that damage reduction and resistance. Without it, oh Christ, uh, mages would not really be particularly viable in this campaign. The combat can also be carried out in two different forms, two different uh, styles, shall we say. There is a fully functioning turn-based combat system, and also a real-time with pause combat system. Both obviously based on the Pathfinder rule set, albeit with a few little mm, things here and there to, you know, make it possible to have a real-time combat system. This is really, really good, because both systems have their advantages and their disadvantages. There are things you can do in the real-time system that you would not be able to pull off in the turn-based system. A nice quick ambush, for example, sniping out an enemy spellcaster before he can get off so much as a single spell. You can do that in real time, absolutely. It also allows you to quote-unquote skip the more tedious fights. If you're just slaughtering your way through a handful of ghouls, for example, you don't necessarily need to turn base all of that out, as it of course slows down the action quite considerably. On the other hand, there are fights that are really god damn difficult. And it's then so useful to be able to just slow everything down and actually think about your actions strategically. And boy, you need to as well. Let me just go over a couple of things here because I know these are pet peeves for quite a lot of people. First and foremost, if you played Kingmaker, you may remember a certain timer system which was hugely unpopular with a lot of people. This game, bearing in mind I haven't played all the way through, but I have not discovered a whole lot in the way of similar timer mechanisms. There is, at the very least, one early on where you have a limited amount of time to explore a city before needing to uh, defend a vital objective. Let's try and keep the spoils to a relative minimum. But the amount of time is quite generous, and even without doing everything else outside, the ability to actually fight that battle doesn't change all that much. The biggest problem is going to be a level disadvantage, as the game does not scale itself to your current abilities. This leads me on to the next pet peeve. Does the game cheat? Um, a little bit here and there. Some of the stat blocks have been tweaked, and you do run into encounters that would be uh, uh, downright sadistic in any actual tabletop setting. But, of course, in a video game, you have an unrivaled superpower, namely the ability to load and save the game whenever you want to. Not in combat, mind you, but outside of it. This obviously allows you to quick save, open a door, discover the two dozen blood-maddened cultists beyond, and then quick load. Put grease down on the door, and then open it again. This time, the combat encounter will work out um, considerably better, shall we say. Now, this does also mean that many of the encounters are very, very harsh, and some of them are straight-up trap positions like getting you completely surrounded by enemies 
before you even get to do anything. That does happen, and particularly us holy things do also occur, like um, the moment you enter a house, for example, you get three rat swarms right on top of you. That is a scenario which, basically, unless you win the initiative roll-off, you're going to take massive damage at the very least, and you're probably just going to outright die at the worst, since swarms during certain difficulty settings can only really be damaged by area of effect weaponry. And if all of the swarms get to move before you even get to take an action, well, they're going to be right on top of your party. Uh, good luck with the whole uh, AoE effect there, right? That is a little bit arsehole but again, the ability to save and load makes it considerably less impossible. So uh, I wouldn't recommend the Iron Man mode right at the beginning. And speaking of Iron Man mode as well, if you feel that all of this sounds a little bit too dickish, don't worry over much. Before you start the game and at any time during the campaign, you have access to a huge amount of customizable rules. If you feel it's too difficult, you can ease it up. You can reduce the amount of damage the enemies do to you. You can reduce the amount of critical hits they get. You can reduce the amount of enemies overall or increase them if you're swinging in that particular direction. Personally, I'm the kind of guy who gets easily frustrated with many of these combat encounters because I am of course a GM myself and I look at a lot of this and I think to myself, holy shit, there is no way I would ever make anything even remotely close to this. Like, this is just churlish. These are the kind of encounters you would get if you piss off your cave master and he just wants the session to end. But whilst, how do I put it, I would describe some of the combat encounters as basically puzzle encounters where the designers have a rather particular way you are intended to engage the combat in, and if you don't, you're gonna have a very uncomfortable time. You also need to bear in mind that Pathfinder, and particularly a campaign like this, a fairly difficult one, is designed with the idea in mind that you are going to be a little bit of an asshole yourself as well. The aforementioned example of opening the door, seeing the cultist, closing it again, putting some grease down in front of the door, and then opening it. You are expected to do that. You are expected to use web, to use grease, and to use sleep in the most dickish manners you can possibly imagine. There is one slight spoilers, but not big ones, there is one combat encounter against a particular mini-boss a little bit into the prologue. Now, the mini-boss has a ridiculous stat line, huge armor value, super difficult to hit, and he, of course, himself strikes like an absolute truckload of bricks made out of depleted uranium. This would normally be a huge problem. If you try to solve it by raising up your shields, drawing your sword and marching into combat valorously, if foolishly. In my case, I put a hex on the enemy, which reduced his ability to make saving throws, and then I can't sleep on him. <laughs> After which, all I had to do was walk up to the enemy and crush his skull with the butt of a glaive. Somewhat, um, anticlimactic? <laughs> yes, probably, but, well, if the game is gonna treat you roughly, might as well treat the game a little bit rough in return, right? And a lot of the initial frustration is just that initial frustration. I had to reload a I don't even know how many times to clear one particular combat encounter with a demon that goes invisible and then sneak attacks. Every time, he would just nuke my tank one shot, 
dead. And that is despite me buffing my tank with everything I bloody had to increase his armor value. It just did not goddamn matter. And the only reason why that was really difficult, really, was because... I didn't have the level or the tools to deal with it. I didn't have my reduce um, saving throws. I didn't have my sleeps. I didn't have my view invisibility, etc. All of the other tools that you get over the course of the campaign, which actually give you access to the things the designers kind of intended for you to use. So while again, I do believe many people will feel that initially the game can be quite frustrating, it does work out a lot better once you actually get the things you need to deal with the encounters. There is one very early on which um, might piss off a lot of people, but I uh, can't say any more than that for now. Though on a bit of a separate yet still related note, the game has a very interesting system where you can analyze enemies. The first time you encounter them, you can analyze them by pressing Y and hovering over them, and you will get a stat block, presuming you've got a good enough roll to identify them. After the combat, you then get another opportunity to analyze the corpse, and so on and so on, until you can pretty much figure out the exact stat blocks of your enemies. Now, this is a really damn cool idea, because it allows you to work around some of these little slight puzzly combat encounters. What is somewhat unfortunate, though, is that they didn't go a step further with this, because they already modified the rule system a little bit. Maybe they should have modified it a hint further. What I would have loved to see is, instead of just a stat block, when you analyze an enemy, there should be a bestiary entry about that enemy. Give me a cool little piece of art depicting the enemy, you know, a nice little charcoal style sketch maybe, and a lore blurb. Uh, for example, there are certain enemies that are the reincarnated souls of people that like to destroy art or precious beautiful items, and through the game you can see these demons doing just that, and it gives a lot of context to the world and why they're doing the things they're doing. It might also teach you about how certain demons act and how you can deal with them better. Add on that lore blurb and then give them a little bit of a weakness, even if it isn't in the basic rule set. Say, for example, that the demons that hate art, right? Right in the part of their rule set that they are far more susceptible to being um, blinded or dazzled for example, than most other demons. That could be a really cool way to deal with those in particular. Or maybe make it so that a certain demon gets um, a flat-footed penalty if you manage to reveal it out of stealth. You know, stuff like that. Ways to kind of make you feel as if you're learning how to fight the enemy. Now, of course, that is a preferred enemy trait, which is supposed to kind of mimic this, but if you're already going to go to the extent of giving you stat blocks and little slightly puzzly encounters, it would make a lot of sense to add in a little bit of direct player action in it as well, to go like, oh, I recognize this enemy, I need to do this to give myself a little bit of an edge against it. I think that would be really cool, that maybe have it be an option so that if you're a Pathfinder Puritan, you can turn it on and off, because again, the options difficulty menu is really, really great. There are some slight issues with the game's coding as well that I will mention. There is mounted combat in the game, which works out well most of the time, but the horse can absolutely get itself stuck on random nonsense. And if you're in a particularly difficult fight, having your heavy hitter get, you know, his turn passed because his horsey can't maneuver past a stone on the ground, that can suck a lot of penis, most absolutely. Uh, additionally, the template for burning hands is stupid, and I've been hitting my allies even though they are clearly not in the template and clearly not being targeted, as there is a little effect showing that, okay, this enemy is about to get hit, and that just doesn't work all the time. It's a little bit frustrating. I haven't experienced any crashes or major bugs or anything like that, however, so I shan't complain too much. 
There is also a second part of the game as well, which I'll touch on a little bit at the end here, because it's not super fleshed out or anything. It is a strategic map style of mode where you move armies around and you fight enemy armies. The system here is pretty damn simplistic. You've got a handful of units and they've got numbers next to them that demonstrate um, or represent, excuse me, the number of units in that particular formation of soldiers. You attack the enemy, you kill their dudes, they attack you, they kill your dudes, and you can regain some with hospitalization after battle. It's not particularly complicated, there's not a whole lot of game mechanics there involving stuff like flanking or zone of controls or stuff like that, but it's a nice little addition to the game that makes you feel as if you're fighting a proper war, you know? That's cool. And scale is another thing that the game really has nailed down. It feels like you're defending a massive city against assault, and it's really awesome. Though I do hate the rest system of Pathfinder. The idea that, oh god, the city is under attack by demons, we must hurry back to the surface to save everyone. Oh, what's that? We've run out of spells and we're fatigued? Well, I guess we gotta set up camp down here for three days. <sighs> there is a system to prevent you from just camping all the time, but from a narrative standpoint, I absolutely loathe it. I Oh, I need to bed down for nine hours in an enemy dungeon? I'm sure nobody will come across my roaring bonfire here. It's a bit stupid, and it's one of those mechanics that I probably would have liked to see changed or just removed entirely, frankly. Or he'll replace with, like, a, a short rest system or something, but, oh well. Minor complaints. All in all, if you played and enjoyed Kingmaker, this is a better game. I absolutely heartily recommend it. If you haven't played a whole lot of classical RPGs, Again, this is one of the better ones. And again, if you're feeling a little bit of frustration in the early levels, which, oh by god, I did, well, be less stubborn than me and just swell down the difficulty a little bit. I, of course, being an idiot, never did that and just continued bashing my head in against the keyboard, but, um, uh, hmm. You don't have to. You you must not. It's it's fine. You can avoid that as well. There is a mechanic to do so. But all in all, if you're interested in a good RPG and some solid companion characters, this is a really damn good game. Heartily recommended. Until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching. And I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.